Good morning, E3. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to 2021. We're looking for a much better year than we've had before. And so we'll start again with our mission, which is to engage, educate, and empower our learning community to be caring, passionate, lifelong learners and civic leaders prepared for college, workforce, and life. And so as we meet today for our E3 Way Assembly, we want to talk about the mission in action. So that is our time today, the mission in action. We know we've had a difficult year behind us, but um, as we will note again today that we've got to be resilient and look for the silver lining and things as we move forward. And so we continue with our graduate profiles, civically engaged, a literacy communicator, creative and innovative, career competitive, and globally engaged. We will hit on all five of our graduate profiles today in our E3-Way assembly. Now we move on to our national anthem. Tonight we are singing the national anthem to honor the noble essential workers who put their lives on the line every day to keep us healthy and safe during the pandemic. Which has hit Latinx and Black communities hardest. And to everyone helping to move our country forward, in the pursuit of justice and an end to systemic inequity. Oh, say. All right, and so before we go on to game changers and mega trends, uh, part of the reason why I'm having some problems is because we've also lost uh, family members and parents of scholars to COVID-19. And so before we move forward, let us just take a moment of silence, um, wishing strength and peace to our, um, to your peers who have lost family members, including parents to COVID-19. So let's just have a moment of silence and we wish them strength. We wish them the energy, the love to continue to move forward in spite of the tragedies that COVID-19 may have brought to them and to even some of you as you um, deal with the impact of COVID-19 in terms of 
job loss, um, and other insecurities that may have come through COVID-19. So let's just take a, a moment of silence, please. All right. Okay, we're going to move on to our game changers and mega trends. And game changers are things that have existed for some time that we knew would change how society functions. And so, one of the game changers that has existed was a pandemic or is a pandemic. And so for some time now, pandemics have been seen as a game changer. This year we had the COVID-19 pandemic and it truly is a game changer. And so the way we used to do business, even how we communicated has changed dramatically. Many of us did not know about uh, Zoom or Google Meets or uh, Microsoft um, Teams. These are new ways of communicating for many people. The way we um, get not just information, but also how we shop, how we get packages. We saw a little of this before with um, Amazon, but now we see that we've really changed how we shop. And Dr. Zhu is going to talk to us more about the impact of the game changers. Technology is another game changer. It is ubiquitous. And we were able to come through 2020 intact, mostly due to technology. So we were able to continue to do things, continue school, continue shopping, continue banking, through technology. So we're going to talk more about that. And then the mega trends that have come as a result of the game changers, digital transformation, globalization. We can communicate with anyone in the globe, wherever they are at any time due to some of our game changers, technology specifically, and then sustainable energy for most of you, if not all of you. And for us, we know that energy is going to be critical moving forward and not just any type of energy, but energy that provides us with a safe way of being. Dr. Zhu is gonna talk a little bit about the stock market. Water is now on the market. It's called a um, commodity because it's so important to your survival. And that's part of our sustainable energy. So we want you to understand the game changers and the mega trends. And when we looked at the word pandemics, you see that it's plural. And that's because that's not the last pandemic. There will be others and they are game changers. They, they increase the rate at which things happen. And Dr. Zhu again, will talk more about that. We saw all of these changes coming, but the pandemic has moved things up maybe by 10 years. All right, game changers and mega trends. And now we move into tech updates with Dr. Zhu. Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. So glad to be in 2021, uh, saying bye to 2020. So I'll start my presentation with the uh, Boston Dynamic Robotics. Throughout the years, we have seen the evolution of this amazing uh, Boston Dynamic Robotics. Dr. Ward, if you can click on the plates in one minute. Please.
So this video just came out last week. Uh, I noticed the, the dramatic improvement uh, on their side. So I, for one, cannot dance as well as robotics. But the truth is they carry so much functionalities into our daily life. Dr. Ward, if you can move on to the next slide. Um, today I'm going to spend some time really focused on the digital transformation. To me, that's the big theme for this decade, for the 10 years. Uh, also, I did some homework during the break. I really look into different uh, companies to see where the digital transformation is happening in different industries. So today I'm going to bring some good examples uh, for you. The first company is Tele, uh, Teladoc. Is telemedicine. Actually, one of my friends used it not long ago, two months ago. So he actually is living in the rural area uh, uh, in California. So at one morning at 5 a.m., he felt like really unconscious, uh, uncomfortable. So he used the services, paid $75, get a doctor, get online in five minutes, telling him what to do. So that's just the example. Not everyone has access to uh, the Kaiser Permanente. But this is gonna be huge in my opinion, because not only for us, especially for people around the world who do not have instant access to healthcare. And we're right in the middle of the pandemic. All of us understand how important the health to us, probably number one. So Teledoc is really changing the game of the healthcare system and the telemedicine. The second company I want to bring to your attention is Zillow. Zillow has been there for a while, but oftentimes we think, oh, Zillow is just a website listed all the uh, houses, apartment available. That was five years ago. They really upped their game. So they're working to make home buying and staying streamlined and easy for us. So uh, I got on the website not long ago, look at some houses just for fun. Not only they updated with the 3D uh, presentation, you know, really it's better than you getting to the house by yourself, gave you the 3D detail of every room, every corner, every piece of the yard for you. And also gave you the big data of the trends, not only the current price and the projection. So the company has ambition really to make it a, convenient platform for all of us, including most of you scholars. At some point, you will buy your first home. The next company is the Peloton. Uh, it's one of the companies I really like. Unfortunately, I didn't buy the Peloton equipment yet, but Dean Bowden and Mr. Russell actually purchased uh, during the pandemic. So it's not just you buy the equipment. Coming with the equipment, you have all the options. You can have one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can have live workout classes, it can be personalized to your need. Basically, you bring a personal gym into your home with the Peloton offering. That's why the company is doing extremely well. Even with the ending of the pandemic, the company is still gonna grow because some of us will say, okay, if I can have a personalized gym, I have access to my peers, to the coaches, to the nutrition guidance, why do I need to go to a gym? You know, so that really changed the game. The next company I want to bring to your attention is called Carvana. So some of you scholars, probably your first car will be a used car, which is normal. My first car was a used car. So Carvana is a website, is a company, really streamlined the used car buying. So buying a car is not an easy task. You have to do your research, you know, talk with the dealer, uh, understand what's going on. But Carvana provided the... Uh, services to the buyers extremely easy and they can even bring the car to you on the same day so that really digitized the whole used car purchasing process the next company is tesla which i'm currently invested in so it's what does digital transformation for tesla is really about autonomous driving this past weekend the news came out the Tesla with the FSD full self-driving software drive the car itself from Los Angeles to the Bay Area, which is about 400 miles with zero intervention. So I really hope at the end of 2021, uh, the autonomous driving software will be released to the mass. I purchased it when it was $8,000, currently $10,000. But if the 
uh, software is mature enough, it could go up to 50,000, as Elon Musk says, at some point in the future, uh, each piece of the software could cost 150,000. Also, because your car can do the job for you to go pick up people, pick up the business, and making money for you. But that might be several years down the road. The next company I want to bring to your attention is called Lemonade. It's an insurance company. Uh, I used to have Geico as my insurance company. Actually, my car was hit in the parking lot in the library. Somebody just went back into my car. Um, so I had to call the Geico to tell them what, what happened. They have good services. But Lemonade is a company you do not deal with the human beings anymore without the intervention. They're using the artificial intelligence uh, with the app very easy. You just use the app, put in your information from the buying the insurance to the claim is all done without human intervention. That's why the company is really changing the landscape for the insurance uh, field. And we know how big the insurance company I mean, the field is, is everyone has insurance, a multiple product. The next product we're using at E3 is called Square. When Mr. Russell or uh, Ms. Riva is charging you for some purchasing, we're using the Square. But Square just released the cash app. The company is so ambitious. Basically means in the future, with the personal financing, if you have the Square cash app, 80% of your daily practices with <laughs> involved money can be done. Means you don't need to have a wallet, you don't need to have a uh, business, I mean, you don't need to have a credit card. And not only that, you can use the Cash App to buy stocks, to buy Bitcoin even now. And also, hopefully this year, this thing, you can use your Cash App to report your tax. So they're building the whole ecosystem with this is really, I mean, I see it's a great, uh, it's a great company with a very promising future square. The next company, because we're in education, uh, I was checking what's the digital transformation in education. This is one of the examples. Check is a company, a local company in California. It started to sell secondhand college textbooks and a digital form, because we know how expensive it is. When I was in, as a grad student at San Diego State, the textbook for computer science course is 170 for one, you know, you use one semester, you don't really need it. So they start with that business, but then they re really refine their business to catering what's needed in the educational landscape. For example, if they need Python programmer, they will develop a good program there digitally, but also with the support, with the professor, with the tutor, with everything you need to master the content for that course. So to me, that's a good example of the digital transformation in educational fields. Next one is Roku. Uh, we use different you know, platforms to watch programs we use in the Amazon Prime, Apple, and so forth. But Roku is the one really kind of streamlined. The Roku app is so easy to use. And they really digitized the TV watching with different options from any customers. And I, uh, really like the company because I use the different ones. I have so many providers at home, believe it or not, uh, English and Spanish. But Roku is the one, uh, to me, really has a promise to do well in this field. Lastly, Dr. Ward earlier mentioned the pandemic really is a catalyst accelerating the uh, the change, the digital transformation. So we know e-commerce actually really uh, accelerated 10 years in one year. So that's how the pandemic changed how we live and how we shop. So I didn't use Amazon. We know Amazon, we know uh, Etsy, you know, that's popular in the United States. Also, we know in China, it's Alibaba and PDD. So that's e-commerce. But I'm listing one here, it's Amazon in Africa. So once you have a good business model, you can take it from one country or one continent to another. Like the e-commerce in Southeast Asia is just booming more fast, like faster than here because it's kind of like mature here as a market. But Jumia is the Amazon in Africa. It really caught my attention. Basically, some people say Africa is not affluent yet. Some countries, some people don't even have access. But if you look beyond five, 10 years, if 
Amazon can be successful in uh, the United States, but I believe this company can be successful, maybe not now, but five, 10 years down the road in Africa. Everyone will have access just like we do now. So the companies I list here, really to me, they are disruptors because they are changing the game in their field. And those traditional operational company, to me, they are disrupted. And as investor, I will never buy those companies uh, as investment because to me, that's very risky. And the company that Ad promise is you can tell their business model is tied with digital transformation. And that's clearly is the future. As we watch the, the Boston dynamics, programming are become smarter, we're more digitized related with all our daily activities in every piece of our lives. So to me, that's very important. At least a couple of companies on the right, to me, if I have to make a combination to invest in the next five, 10 years, these are the companies I would hold money in for a long time, like Square, Tesla, Peloton, and Lemonade. But lastly, I, will, I do want to remind you, I'm not telling you to buy it uh, today or add it in now. It's like, it's a good, good company with good products. It's like, I like In-N-Out Burger. It's $4, $5. But if the In-N-Out Burger is $50 for one, I'm not going to buy it. So that's another piece I just want to remind you. If it's a good company, sometimes like fishing, you need to use your patience to find the right price uh, time to really invest in and hold it for a while. So uh, next slide. So what does really mean i give you a lot of information but to me uh it's very clear as scholars in high school you have to have digital skills if you don't have digital skills you don't even understand the new business model for those companies i just presented to you this morning i was looking at mr Sarudi's python class so uh the guys you scholars are using the pi charm it's a program you know to use Python code at a very basic level. But to me, that's a starting point. You have to start somewhere, either with Python, with any programming, because it's more about coding, programming, and design. And that's uh, inherently embedded in any business now and in the future. Also, Dr. Ward presents E3 graduate profiles every time. And to me, that's a solid foundation. You really develop all of your skills in every area so you can work for any company. And I can't emphasize enough about the reading. The more, the older I get, the more important I see the reading in my life. Because to me, that's the least investment for the most return. Now the information is abundant everywhere. Some, most of the time are free. But did you use your time wisely to read the things really feed your knowledge and feed your skill. So you can use those in your lives way beyond E3. So I oftentimes joke with my friend, if you ignore the future, the future will ignore you. Because my friends are doing the investment as well. So I said, you have to look beyond five, 10 years, understand where we're heading in the world. If you do not pay attention, then probably you will not have that big return. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Dr. Xu. Thank you so very much. And I think this is your last one. Yeah, I think, yes. I think uh, Ms. Baylan um, put it there as the conclusion. I think it's perfect. Really, education is our passport to the future, since we're talking about the future. Because if you ignore the future, future ignores you. But for tomorrow, really belongs to all of us who prepare for it as we're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhu. And scholars, let me just reemphasize everything that Dr. Zhu has said. Um, we bring this to you because we believe in you. We know that you can have great futures. And in order to do that, we want to make sure that you have access to the same things that others who are um, who have access to not just education, but to great jobs, um, great opportunities. We want to make sure that you have the very same. Dr. Zhu talked about the Python course. 
Do you know I spend $240 per child and I have two kids. So I spend $480 a month. And then for my niece, I add her in. So $720 a month just for them to get coding each month. So they have four hours of coding, $60 per session, because I believe that coding is important. That digital component that doctors you spoke about is extremely important. That's why we have exploring computer science. We know the class is hard, but it is something that you need for your future. So I ask that you push in, push in and try your very best. Try your best. Don't give up. Mr. Cheruti is there to help you. Kathy is there to help you. So you push in, you push in, and you make sure that you are able to make it through that exploring computer science course and any other computer science courses that we bring to you. He talked about reading. We read every day. I read every day. I spend at least an hour a day reading, sometimes two hours. I read my Bloomberg reports every day. I read the New York Times daily every day. And then I have books that I read because in order to stay, to know what's happening in the future, you got to read. If you don't read, you will be left behind. And so your reading skills are bar none, the most important thing. You can't access the technology if you can't read. So read every day. When we ask you to read and achieve, it's not because we want to just bore you with reading. It's because we know that your reading skills are important to your future. So I ask again that you push in, you lean in in 2021 to become your next best self, that you are resilient, that you work hard every single day because it's about your future and making sure that you have the opportunities that others have as well. And with that, we move on to fortitude and moving forward with Ms. Cologne. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year, E3 scholars. So I wanted to take this chance just to talk about fortitude. And for those of you who might not know what that means, it's really just having courage in pain or adversity. And having fortitude is what allows us to overcome our fears, remain resilient in the face of obstacles. Uh, this is a really great topic to talk about right now, especially after the year that everyone has been through. 2020 was really tough for a lot of people for many different reasons. Um, but unfortunately, in life in general, there are going to be more tough times, whether they're whole years or just a few days or a few months. And it's really important to be able to kind of remain resilient and be able to pick yourself up even on the days that you don't want to, to continue progressing. And so I say this now because we do have about three more school weeks before finals. If this has been a tough semester for you, we 100% understand, but you still have three weeks to move forward, to start you know, putting your best foot forward, to making sure that you're submitting your assignments, talking to your LFs, talking to your peers if you're confused about anything, and kind of developing that fortitude now. I promise you it will help you in the future. It will help you as an adult with the many different things you'll go through. So just try to keep moving forward. And if you have any questions or if you're feeling kind of self-conscious about that, me and Ms. Strenning are definitely here to talk to you about that and to give you strategies to move forward academically. But just know that we understand and that fortitude is definitely something that will help you long-term, not just right now. Thank you. And now I am here to do some senior college shout outs. Our seniors have been working very hard this year to continue on their path to go to college. Um, and we just wanted to shout out these scholars again. Um, so I'll go through the list. Arizona State University, Tarase got in. Azusa Pacific University, Tia Lorenich got in there. Um, Akira Pettis got into Benedict College with a scholarship. Uh, yeah, Ashley Vizcaya got into the Culinary Ooh. Institute of America. Uh, we had many get into Grand Canyon University, Yay. and many of these with scholarships as well. We have Paula Bailon, Mercedes Cuevas Hernandez, Serenity Dorsey, Ava Figueroa, Yahira Franco, Gregory Mitchell, Abraham Sakaris, Laura Torres and Ashley Vizcaya. Congratulations to the Yay. two of you. Uh, 
Um, Paula Balon also got into Hawaii Pacific University Ooh. with a scholarship. Gregory Mitchell got into Northern Arizona University. Ruth Sweetheart got into the Pensacola Christian College. Awesome. We have two scholars that got into Point Loma Nazarene University, Francesca Dale and Kevin Salazar with a scholarship. Um, Anna Luz Valdivia let me know right before break that she got into Sacram Sacramento State University. Um, Serenity Dorsey got into San Diego Christian College. Um, and we have two scholars that just got into San Diego State University early. It's Haziel O'Malley and Ruth Sweetheart. We have uh, Chris Tu and Tara Say both got scholarships and got into the University of Arizona. Um, University of Denver, Tara Say got in with a scholarship. And Elvis Morrissey got into the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Seniors. Woo! Congratulations. All together, we have earned over $383,000 in scholarships. However, if we missed you, if your name is not up there, that means we were not alerted to your um, acceptances or scholarships. So please send that to me and Ms. Cologne so that way we can celebrate you at the next um, E3-way check-in so that way we can celebrate all of our seniors and all of their accomplishments. So congratulations, seniors. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Drenning. And for all of our scholars, this is just the beginning of the acceptance season. So our seniors will continue to get acceptance letters through um, April, through early April, and decision day is May 1st. And so seniors, if you have not completed your applications, for some of our universities, we have a few days left and you must complete those. And for all of our kiddos, it doesn't matter whether or not you think you're gonna go to a four-year university. The point is you wanna have the option. And so we always provide ourselves with as many options as we can because options provide opportunities. So we don't close the door on ourselves. We open as many doors as we can by ensuring that we have as many options as possible. So again, I strongly encourage you to lean in and get it done. Congratulations again to those seniors who have already heard, and we look forward to hearing from the rest of you as we go through the next few months. Ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, you see what's happening and what's coming for you. So make sure you lean in. You're trying your best every day that you have fortitude, fortitude that you push forward even when it's painful you push forward because when we push forward just like when you're riding a bike and you push through the pain right and then you get better at those long distance bike rides same thing it's memory muscle brain muscles that we want to continue to strengthen all right nwea maps testing cast and cast dr Zhu. Um, so we'll continue to use the end of the year maps. So scholars will have it at the end of the semester as part of the final. Also for the CASP this year, uh, only applies for the juniors and the CASP for juniors and the seniors. They have shortened the format. In the spring, they suspended the assessment. But as of now, what we know is the first part is shortened from 40 questions to 20 and the uh, performance task will stay the same. Thank you. Also for the AP exams this year, it's a little bit different as well. Uh, last spring, the AP exam was modified and was taken at home. As of now, uh, they haven't given us the detail about whether scholars can take at home, but we already know for sure this year, all of the AP exam will be the full length because last year at the, uh, at the end of the year, there's a di dispute between the college board and certain universities. Certain universities say if scholars do not demonstrate the full mastery of a course, we cannot really grant the college credit. So that's really the key reason college board says this year will stay with the full length exams. So scholars will have opportunity to claim the college credit when they get into colleges. 
And we will have additional support, speaking of that, on Saturdays, maybe every other Saturday morning, depending on your needs as a scholar. Your APLFs will be available to support you with two or three hours in the morning. So that's additional resources we want to bring to you to support you. Thank you, Dr. Zhu, and thank you, our AP uh, LFs. So scholars, if you have an AP class and those Saturdays that are available to you, again, lean in, lean in and make sure you are there doing your best, learning as much as you can for your AP exams. And remember your AP exams and your four-year universities, your uh, community college, we go there to get to the other side, right? It's the viable path to your future that we're looking for. Um, speaking of dates, so we are on a lockdown now, and we anticipate that we will have greater lockdowns in the future, moving into uh, March. But we also anticipate by the end of March that L LF's staff will begin to get the vaccinations. And so we anticipate that by the end of April or sometime in April or May, we will begin having everyone return to campus to end the year. Um, and if that doesn't happen, we do anticipate that we will have a regular graduation this year. Uh, that means that at least our scholars will be able to go through the graduation ceremony, which is going to be at the Oregon Pavilion at the Balboa Park. Um, so more to come on that, but we are anticipating I'm not gonna say a return to normalcy because that's done. We're gonna create a new normalcy moving forward. But we do anticipate to see you back on campus sometime this year. I do mean all of you sometime this year, all right? So that is coming again in the future. We have a new president coming. Um, Dean Portillo is going to talk a little bit about that. And so we're hoping with the change in presidency, we have some um, coordination and efforts around the pandemic and that we are able to get the pandemic under control so that we can get ourselves back in a place where we can see each other, where we can remove the social distancing because human beings need to interact. They need to see each other. They need to be able to uh, feel each other, even your energy. And that does not come through necessarily on a screen. So we look forward to that to that day. I just want to bring you up to speed a little bit on that. Okay, CARES policy. We're moving right into Dean Bowden on the CARES policy. Yes, hello everyone. As you know, we have enacted the E3 CARES policy. And what this is, is if you show up on camera, you're in professional attire and you're doing your best, you are actively engaged in class, you will not fail. And this is in place because we know how difficult school is during the time of COVID. It's, and uh, we know that things are keeping moving along. Colleges are still enrolling kids. Jobs are gonna be taking people back and you need to be prepared for that time when this pandemic is over. But we don't want to cause any harm during this time when there's enough, being, enough harm being caused in our society already. But until then, you need, if you're going to choose a theme for the year, it's got to be fortitude, grit, tenacity, perseverance, resilience, grit. Because we will get to the other side of this thing together. And to be together, you got to be on camera, you got to show up wearing your attire, and you got to participate. You do that, and good things will come. Mm -hmm. And showing up on camera is not just good for you, it's good for your peers, it's good for your LFs because we can't be next to each other physically, but at least if we can see each other, that helps our psyche, that helps us to be emotionally strong. So do it not just for you, but for your peers and for your LFs. And when you're on camera, some basic things, you wanna make sure that your face and upper body are visible, not just your forehead, and be in a room where there's enough lighting so that you can see your face. Thank you, Ashley, for modeling. <laughs> and in terms of what to wear, um, as we start bringing more and more people back on campus, it's gonna be regular E3 attire. That is your, uh, your white polo 
or collared shirt, an E3 outer layer, which is a, a sweater or the um, jacket, khaki bottoms or navy blue pants. You can also wear sh um, knee length shorts, khaki skirts or plaid skirts. On uh, Tuesdays, you know that we have our tie. And then on Thursdays, you can wear college attire, club attire, um, or uh, and any other uh, military service attire. And when you're at home, you can probably get away with just wearing the polo shirt and the tie. All right, thank you, Dean Bowden. And today is Tie Tuesday, and that is why I am in my tie and my button-up uh, shirt today. Okay, what's coming up next at E3? Dean Portillo. That is actually still Mr. Bowden. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, that is correct. Yes, and then uh, just real quickly, if you need any attire, please, please, please reach out to Miss Soto. She'll be able to take care of all attire needs. Um, so we're planning on bringing all cohorts back on the 19th. That is our goal. And also uh, bringing, home a bringing in a third cohort. So if you have submitted um, uh, the <laughs> survey in, uh, with an interest, um, expect to be notified shortly in the next couple of weeks. Um, before coming onto campus, you have to go through the training of what to expect when I return to campus um, training. So you need to know the protocols when you're on campus. Some basic protocols are you always need to wear your mask. You should adhere to social distancing, meaning you want to avoid coming within six feet of each other. Wash and sanitize your hands often. On campus, you'll realize that uh, a lot of care has been taken to locate different um, locations where you can sit, where you're still socially distancing. So follow those markers, follow those signs um, and don't move the furniture or the signs. There's also a flow of traffic we try to adhere to, and those are indicated with arrows on the ground. It's important we follow those as well. All of this is done so we can create the safest environment possible during this pandemic. Um, and we want to be, we don't want you to be the reason that we have to close the school back down. We want everybody to be able to get back on campus as soon as possible. All right, thank you, Dean Bowden. ASB update, I think we have Sapa. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank so you. for the ASB updates, on January 8th, we have a guest speaker from by Laura uh, Beza, the central organizer for the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial County's office. On February 4th, we have the No Place for Hate lesson uh, number two. March 8th through the 12th, we have the Multicultural Festival Week. On April, we have Leukemia and Lymphoma uh, Fundraiser. On April 12th through the 16th, Spring Spirit Week. April 23rd, Talent Show. May 6th, No Place for Hate Lesson, number three. All right, thank you, Sapa. And scholars, just so you know, leukemia, um, uh, strikes many of our young as well as early as uh, preschool age. And um, some of our own scholars have dealt with leukemia in the past. Um, uh, most of them have been successful in making it through. But unfortunately, we did lose one of our scholars again um, to leukemia um, just last month. Um, and so it's tough times. Uh, some of you may have known O'Brien Padilla. Uh, he did not make it through. And so our prayers again go out to the family for the strength that they need now that O'Brien is no longer with us. The very difficult times for the family to move through. Okay. Uh, we're going to go on to celebrating the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, MLK Day is coming up. Dean Portillo. Good morning and welcome to 2021. So before we get started, we're going to review some important dates. So have your calendar or your planner ready. In case you miss one, you can also find these dates on the E3 Civic High calendar posted on the website. 
So as Dr. Ward mentioned, on January 18th, E3 and the entire nation pauses in remembrance of a civil rights hero, Martin Luther King Jr., which is a federal holiday. MLK Day was designed to honor this activist and minister, which was assassinated in 1968. His accomplishments have continued to inspire generations of Ameri Americans, including you and me. Martin Luther King also led the efforts for the Voting Act of 1963, which achieved historic reforms that continue to impact our nation today. Um, as we all know, voting rights are under attack nationwide currently as states pass voter suppression laws. These laws lead to significant burdens for eligible voters trying to exercise their most fundamental constitutional rights. We are witnessing such acts in cities such as of color, such as Georgia, um, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Atlanta, just to name a few. Uh, last month, a federal judge allowed Georgia officials to purge voter rolls of about 300,000 voters who had not voted since 2012. Uh, many opponents said that more than 120,000 people should have been left on the rolls, especially in a heavily contested presidential election year. On Tuesday, a Wisconsin appeals court intervened to stop as many as 209,000 names from being scrubbed from the state's voter registration rolls. In a case where voting rights advocates, again, say could impact also access to the polls in a key battleground 2020 election state. Lastly, in North Carolina, the question of new stricter voter ID rules is still being fought in the, in the court. This month, um, the state's attorney general vowed to fight a recent court ruling that blocked the state's new voter ID law. This goes, um, we see it happening since about 2008, even before. States across the country have passed measures to make it harder for Americans, particularly people of color, the elderly, students and people with disabilities to exercise their fundamental right to cast a ballot. These measures include cuts to early voting, voter ID laws and purges of voter rolls. These attacks diminish the people's voice, our voice, your voice and mine. So as Bernice King, daughter of MLK says, change never happens just because there has to be, there has to be a force behind that effort and people need to be involved. So on the 18th of January, as we pause to remember MLK, let's be that force behind the effort that brings change. So we'll be celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you, Dean Portillo, for that powerful message. And today we have voting going on in Georgia for two Senate seats. Um, and again, we see some of that voter suppression trying to tell us that the votes are illegal. And that's because People of color are stepping up and voting like never before. And the fact of the matter is your vo votes not only count, but they make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And folks know that. And so they're trying to keep us, people of color, young people from voting. Because if you do, you bring about real change. And mm -hmm. so know that your vote counts. And that's why we are E3 Civic High. Mm -hmm. And that's why one of our learning profile, our graduate profiles is to be civically engaged because you make a difference. You make a difference. Thank you, Dean Portillo. Mm -hmm. So the next uh, performing arts events, we have two that we have set dates for. We have the winter play coming up January 18th. Um, and then we have the Choir Spring Concert, March 12th. Now the two last ones, Spring Musical and End of Year Showcase, those are still to be determined. So you'll have some additional updates on the next dates. Final exams, very important for you to start to get ready for this final exam. Uh, fall final exams will happen January 21st through the 24th. So start taking a look at those notes, reviewing, uh, making sure that you fill all those gaps that you may have uh, acquired, um, getting together with your peers to just be ready for those final exams. Uh, the spring final exams will happen June 9th through the 12th and we'll follow the exam schedule um, on those during those weeks and you'll get those informations as we get closer to those dates. Black History Month is during the month of February. So we will be having our annual assembly, Black History Month assembly, and that'll take place February 26th. 
So just super quickly, uh, be on the lookout for an email in February. If you are eligible to join National Honor Society, that email will have everything. So again, check your emails. If you are eligible and not in National Honor Society and are interested, uh, that is when you'll get the notification if you're eligible. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Spring break, yes. Spring break will happen March 29th through April 9th. So be ready, but be safe. Women's History Month, our annual celebration will happen uh, April 30th and it will be via our assembly. Scholar-led conferences will take place April 20th through the 24th. Please stand by for important updates on how this will happen. Okay, thank you. And this time we're really going to be looking at your uh, power school and having a discussion about how you're doing and what your next steps are. Civic Service Day, our turn to help. So that'll happen during the week of April 20th. Again, you'll have more information following up. Okay, and you look for something from Ms. Carter because this time Civic Service Day is actually a day when you're gonna be turning in your logs of all the civic service that you've been doing up to that point. And taking care of younger siblings, uh, helping out with family members, all of those things count towards civic service. And so keep a log. If you don't have a log, then contact Ms. Carter for that log. All right, Design Thinking and Spring Exhibition is actually going to be June 3rd uh, this year. And our design thinking actually is tied into being prepared for college, workforce, and life. Why? Design thinking gives you voice and choice. It gives you an opportunity really to uh, do some research. So not only is it tied into the uh, our mission, but totally into our five graduate profiles. Internet research and presentation uh, ties into those profiles. Human-centered design presentations, real world projects we do through design thinking, and then collaboration in groups. And you see inside here, Self-direction is part of the DT process. Digital capabilities, we talked about those, how important they are. One thing that we haven't spoken about is empathy. And empathy is also going to get us through the pandemic. It's not just about us, but it's about others and ensuring that we all come through together. That's why at E3, we say, take care of you, take care of each other. The empathy is taking care of each other, feeling what others, feel. And that's important to being a good human being. And that's why in our mission statement, we also say caring, caring. So empathy is important to E3. It's important for us and for you to be a good person, a good scholar. It means that you have empathy. And we also bring that in through design thinking. And you see the other ones there, adaptability. If nothing, the pandemic should have taught us that we have to be adaptable, flexible, and then we have to have some skills to keep us motivated. So DT Spring uh, Exhibition, June 3rd, 5 to 7 p.m. And lastly, our uh, one of our last assemblies that we'll be celebrating will be the celebration of Cinco de Mayo, which will happen obviously in the month of May. So more information to come. All right, and then on to our two uh, alum. We have uh, Alexandra, Alex with us today, and Albert. Both of them are at UCSD. Lexi, go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Lexi. I am a third year at UCSD, currently studying international business. I'm also a research institute, a research assistant um, in a computational neurology lab at the Salk Institute as well as a marketing intern at EPS Bioscience. Um, and I'm also on the board for the Tango Club at UCSD. No, a lot of big fancy words. <laughs> um, one thing that I did want to mention was E3 has really helped me in so many different ways uh, to be prepared for UCSD and be prepared for adult life. In particular, the internships um, from my senior and also uh, subsequent year beforehand. Um, there's so many different things that E3 has helped me learn about myself and also helped me learn about the real world life because it's tough out here. <laughs> um, you know, one of my biggest things is saver, being young. Um, I'm currently uh, financially independent from both of my parents recently. 
Um, so it's definitely tough thinking about bills and rent and all that fun stuff. Um, but one big piece of advice that I would like to give all of these scholars out there um, is don't necessarily feel like you have to know exactly what you want to do when you graduate. Uh, I did, and I started off as bioengineering at UCSD, and now I'm an international business major, complete 180. Um, you know, and I think E3 does a really great job with letting you explore through internships, which is amazing. Um, getting that real world experience, one, has helped me get other real world experience once I've graduated, but also helped show me what I'm interested in and what I'm not. Um, and also taking different classes and joining different clubs, um, explore as much as you possibly can at your age because you know, you want to find what you're passionate about. Don't just go for something that you think might be, you know, make you a lot of money or things like that. Um, you want to make sure that you will love whatever you do. Um, and E3 does a really great job at allowing you to do that through civic service is another way. Um, and so many different opportunities. So take as many of those opportunities as you possibly can. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. And um, Albert, Albert, what do you have to share with us? And Lexi, stick around. We might have some scholars that have some questions for you guys after we're done. Thank you. Albert, are you there? Mm -hmm, yeah. So hello, my name is Albert Henderson. I am a first year. I'm going on second soon at, UC, at the University of California, San Diego. I'm currently, man I'm currently majoring in management sciences, but I'm working towards changing that to data science because I applied for the wrong major on my application. And um, I think for like transition tips into from high school to college, at least, what e, at least for what E3 helped prepare me for, I think this is, this is probably more personal for me, but at E3, I was a very, um, like kind of work at my own pace type of person. So I think being able, to, being able to work that way at E3 really helped me get used to college because in college, no one really tells you to do anything. You can really just do anything you want whenever you want it and no one's gonna stop you or tell you otherwise, which can be a good or bad thing. And um, some advice for students. Um, I think specifically for UCSD, from my personal experience, um, be very mindful of what you purchase on campus because uh, the prices of everything here are very fluctuating from what you're used to. So be very mindful of your money because like I go to the dining halls and I can buy like some small like Gatorade for like 230 I can go to like a store and buy it for like a dollar. So be very mindful of your money. But um, some actual advice, um, make a, make a schedule, um, time management, and um, don't feel don't feel pressured or don't be upset if you don't get admitted into the major you want when you when you get accepted. Like don't let like your major be the determining factor of the school you go to immediately. Because there's because there's always there's, there's always opportunity to change into that major after you get into the school. Very good advice there. Very good advice. All right. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Lexi. Stick around, please. And scholars, if you have questions for Lexi or Albert, please uh, send now a chat to Ms. Balon, and we will connect you with them uh, before we finish up today. All right. Graduation day is June 18th at 2 p.m. As I've said earlier, it's going to be at the Oregon Pavilion at the Balboa Park outside. Whoo, thank goodness it's outside. And so uh, as we think about COVID-19, we can spread out and we can have our graduation. Whew, thank goodness. And so we also want to th thank Ms. Gibson for thinking about the Balboa Park and making sure that that happened for us. I also want to thank Ms. Balon, who's always behind the scenes on all of our uh, assemblies, our times together, and is the um, slide deck extraordinaire. So shout out to Miss Baylon. Okay, as we dismiss, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So let's get educated scholars. Let's lean in, lean in, lean in like you have never leaned in before. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we will see you soon. Love y'all.